is just fantastic. Captain's Lock, Subdate 210817.3. I might talk to Subfleet about changing inmates' uniforms to match their crime. Bloody for murder, suits with chaps for lawyers, Pokemon onesies for the virgin weebs, and clown costumes for the sex offenders. Welcome everyone to the Halls of Injustice. Today we welcome inmates' numbers, there's a few of them here, 084, 084.1, and 084.2. Becky West Davidson, Sean Palmer, and Sebastian Smith, formerly known as Luke Greenland, all three of whom will be spending a considerable amount of their life in prison for the rather heinous crime they committed. Becky West Davidson is a bully, a lying, manipulative, aggressive, ipshit riddled bully. Ipshit's a place, more commonly known as Ipswich, but I don't like Ipshit, so I'm going to call it Ipshit that enjoys taking advantage of vulnerable people and creating drama so that she can sit back and watch the events unfold, and therefore those involved burn. I should probably change that to past tense, but time will tell if she reforms or not while she spends a considerable amount of her life in one of these ISO cubes. To prove this point, we can now talk about the lead up to a crime that put her and the other two idiots into the ISO cubes. For this, we need a victim, Joe Pooley, a man with ADHD, Asperger's, and autism. He is considered, was considered, highly vulnerable and just wanted friends. There is a reason I specifically mention that. The judge himself will reference it later, and it does play a part in what unfolded. So initially, all of this started when Becky had sex with Joe at her home. She then went on to tell Sebastian Smith of this, mostly to make him jealous because she wanted him, but he wasn't really as interested until he found out someone got there first. Although to be clear, many people got there first, she had children. This did, though, work. It yielded a positive result for Becky that actually falls in line with what I accused her earlier of, liking to sit back and watch people involved burn, because Sebastian then started to send aggressive messages to Joe. That was nice of her, wasn't it? Shortly after this encounter, though, Becky was no longer interested in Joe. She got what she wanted, essentially. So she ghosted him. If you are unsure what ghosting is, it is the practice of ending a personal relationship with someone by suddenly and without explanation withdrawing from all communication. It's also known as simmering or icing. So yes, the term can be considered colloquial. Because of the conditions and issues that Joe Pooley has, he started messaging Becky for information, but she never responded. So the messages continued because he couldn't let it go. Understandably so. She then got aggressive, very aggressive. Hell, at one point she destroyed her entire apartment because she couldn't control her rage, everyone. It's okay, everything in this cell is bolted down. Eventually, Joe and Becky did in fact meet up and they went through a wooded area where the River Gipping is in, again, Ipshit. During this walk, they discussed many things and Joe may have said something a little bit, who. Understandably, it would elicit a response. And what did Joe Pooley say? No wonder you ain't with your kids. Something Joe did not know at the time, though, was that Becky was actually casing the location where they were speaking. The reason why is because, after what he said, she wanted revenge. And for this, we now insert inmates 084.1 and 084.2, Sean Palmer and Sebastian Smith. For those who have a delicate disposition, consider this your trigger warning. On August the 6th, Joe Pooley was lured out of his flat at a bed and breakfast by Sebastian Smith and taken to a flat where he was interrogated and given alcohol, something which he was not used to. He was then, after this interrogation, walked home along the towpath by Sebastian Smith and Sean Palmer who both then, on their travels, decided to yeet him into a river. Sean Palmer then went down to that river and held Joe Pooley's head under the water, something which was confirmed by his mother 
because he had confessed that to her. Eventually, a search began for Joe Pooley after his mother raised awareness of this. And interestingly, Sean Palmer was a part of that search. Becky West Davison was not, nor was Sebastian Smith. Becky, rather interestingly, when Joe Pooley's body was found and a memorial service was arranged, was actually busy getting consoled by Sam Nichols, Joe Pooley's mother, because she at the time did not know that Becky West Davidson played a part in this, a big part in this, a vindictive, manipulative part, born entirely out of sexual jealousy. It didn't take long for the police, by the way, to then realize who was involved, so Sebastian Smith, Sean Palmer, and Becky West Davidson were arrested. All three denied anything. I do not, for the sake of it, have confirmation if it was the mother of Sean Palmer coming forward, or if it was when the police got Joe Pooley's phone and checked messages on that to ascertain what was going on. I have conflicting reports, but nothing definitive. Let's go with that. Either or, all three were arrested, and all three stood trial, two of whom refused to turn up for sentencing hearings and all of that. But don't worry, Becky West Davidson was there, pleading her innocence, because she's totally innocent, even though throughout the entire trial she was proven 100% guilty. Something confirmed by the judge was that Becky West Davidson used sexual jealousy to cause Sebastian Smith to feel aggressive, angry, and hostile towards Joe Pooley, and that the jealousy and love triangle sounded like a film, except this wasn't a film, this was real life ipshit. Interesting to add to all of this, Sebastian Smith had allegedly confessed to a friend that he had taken Joe Pooley to a wood a week before he had been murdered and told him to dig his own grave. The trial involving inmate 084, 084.1 and 084.2 went on for four months, which is quite a while, I'll give you that. But there's more to this. An inquest now has to happen because of the nature of the vulnerability of Joe Pooley and the absolute failing when it came to providing him with assistance and care. But that is a subject for another day. Instead, we're going to push on with what happened at the trial. Judge Levitt told Becky West Davidson, Rather cruelly, you blanked him, ghosted him, and alienated him, leaving him bereft of any comfort. There is no doubt in my mind that you encouraged the attack on Joe Pooley. The sad thing is that he was only after a loving heart, but you betrayed his heart. You were a part of a group who accepted Joe when it suited you, but no sooner had that been done, you rejected him. With this, we now get to the verdict. Becky West Davidson, Sean Palmer, Sebastian Smith, all three found guilty of murder. And with this, we get to sentences. These are good sentences, by the way, by comparison to our typical murder sentences. Sebastian Smith, formerly Luke Greenland, who was out on license but had actually been meant to go back to jail before the murder happened because he hadn't reported in. Yep, that happened was ordered to serve a minimum of 21 years. Sean Palmer, a minimum of 18 years. And because there's a sentencing gap here, even though she pulled all the strings, yes, equality everyone, it's a crock of shit and you know it, Becky West Davidson was ordered to serve 17 years behind bars. Just to be clear here, that doesn't mean she serves 17 years. Whereas with the other two it said they serve a minimum of 18 and 21, hers is 17 years. Which means if she shows any sign of remorse, she'll be out in half that time. So eight and a half years. And I only say this because no article says minimum of for her, but it does for Palmer and Smith. Sam Nichols, Joe Pooley's mother, has put out a statement on this, supporting the fact that they've all gone down for a long time. And that's good, but I'm also glad she's also pillorying the local government for not looking after her son, an adult who needed care. You can now say, ah, oh, but that's her job. It's very hard for a single mother to do that with a fully grown adult child with special needs that he had. So many questions are going to be asked about that. Now, as we're done, I'd like to know what you all think. Please do let me know in the comments down below. As a final thing, I shall be streaming on Twitch tonight. 
if I don't see you there, have a fantastic day, and thank you all very much for listening.